Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and uh, what we were discussing, we were discussing about the isolation of gene from the particular host and in that context uh, what we were discussing, we were discussing about the preparation of genomic library as well as the cDNA library. So, let us uh, summarize what we have discussed in the previous lecture. So, what we have discussed, we have discussed about how to prepare the genomic library. Within the genomic library, we have discussed how to isolate the genomic DNA, then how to digest the genomic DNA to a suitable size fragment and then how to clone these fragments into the, uh, into the different vectors and what is the carrying capacity of different vectors and, uh, and so on. Similarly, for the cDNA library, we have prepared, uh, we have discussed about how to isolate the RNA from the, uh, from, the, uh, from the mammalian cells and then how to prepare the cDNA. We have discussed different methods of preparing the cDNA and then ultimately we have discussed also about how to integrate this cDNA into the vectors or the uh, ca carrying molecules and then at the end we have discussed about how to transform the, uh, the construct into the suitable host and then uh, ultimately you are going to get either the genomic library or to do the cDNA library. So, now the next topic to get the gene of interest is that you have to screen either the genomic library or to the cDNA library. So, let us see how to screen the genomic library or the cDNA library. When we say about screening, that means that you have the a variety of molecules and among those variety of molecules, you have to choose a specific molecule, which means the tools what you have to use is also should be specific for that particular molecule and it should not have any cross reactivity to the other molecule. For example, if I have to search about uh, myself. So, my name is Vishal Trivedi. So, suppose I am searching and you are searching my name on, Visha, uh, on Google and if you type the uh, my name Vishal Trivedi and you will try to search on Google, it will tell you the different types of uh, the, the names or the persons with the same name in different places. Uh, which you are going to, which may be working in a different, different institutions and which may be working in a different countries. So, this name is not specific, this name is specific only if you put another, another affiliations or uh, additional information. For example, if I write Vishal Trivedi IIT Gohati, then it becomes uh, slightly more specific compared to the only name as Vishal Trivedi, but still it could be possibility that in within the IIT Guwahati also you may find uh, several uh, person with the same name. So, in that case you also have to add the department's name. For example, in our case uh, the department name is Biosciences and Bioengineering. So, now if you put this as a query in the Google, there is a more probability that you may find myself and you may find my profile onto the IIT Guwahati website. Similarly, when we would like to screen the clones for a desired property or for a desired clone of containing a desired gene, you have to also use a specific analytical tool or analytical uh, uh, techniques. Uh, uh, to screen the clones. In the biological system, you have the only two molecules which are having the 
uh, some kind of ordered um, arrangement. For example, if you take the DNA, uh, the DNA is uh, can be used to uh, screen the clones because the DNA is having a systematic ordering of the nucleotides and that the, the, the arrangement of the nucleotide within the DNA molecule is very, very specific for a particular set of gene or particular set of genes. Similarly, if you go with the proteins, the protein also could let you to have a, a specific searches for a particular clone. So, in that regard, for a screening of different clones for of the genomic or the cDNA library, we have the three different analytical tools which can be used. So, what are the different uh, tools? We have the DNA sequences. So, DNA is a sequence which is made up of, of the nucleotides. So, nucleotides are uh, and these the arrangement of nucleotide in a particular uh, stretch of uh, DNA is very, very specific, especially if you are talking about the nucleotide sequence or nucleotide sequence of a small stretch of DNA. So, that is very, very specific. Similarly, the protein uh, is also having the uh, immunogenic epitopes. For example, if you have a protein, uh, what is mean by the immunogenic epitope is that if you have a protein which is of three dimensional conformations, what will happen is the some portion of the protein is going to react for the with the immune system and these regions are going to give you the antibodies and so and which is going to be very, very specific this for this particular protein, it may these antibodies may not be react with the with the other proteins, they are because they are very specific for this particular epitope. So, this property can be also used to screen genomic library or the uh, cDNA library. Uh, the third is that you have an enzyme and the this enzyme has a uh, specific reactions which it is catalyzing and that reaction can be used uh, also to screen the uh, genomic library or the cDNA library. So, at the end what we have concluded, we have the three analytical tools either the DNA sequences or the DNA sequences of the clone or the, the antibodies which you can use or ex, uh, over express or which you can develop against the uh, these uh, uh, proteins which are present inside these clones and the enzymatic activity which will be coming out from the enzyme which is present inside the uh, clones. Uh, as you can see in these kind of classifications, the, the, uh, the use of antibody approach is more suitable for uh, screening the cDNA clones, whereas the, the approach of enzymatic activity is more appropriate for the genomic library. So, this means that the uh, while you uh, can use any of these analytical tools, uh, uh, you can you can you still be having a uh, better results if you use the antibodies for screening the cDNA clones, uh, cDNA clone, cDNA libraries, or the enzymatic activity for the genomic library. Whereas the DNA sequence is a generic approach; it can be used for screening of both the genomic library as well as the cDNA library to identify the gene. So, let us start with the, uh, the approach where the DNA sequences could be used as a analytical tool to screen the genomic or the cDNA library. So, uh, the basis of uh, screening by the DNA hybridization depends on the property that in within the DNA you have a specific base pairing between the nucleotides. For example, a, a adenine is always making a pair with the thymine and guanine is always making a pair with cytosine. So, 
uh, adenine is making a pair with thymine with the two hydrogen bonding whereas the guanine is making a hydrogen bonding with the cytosine with the three hydrogen bonding and this is very very specific because of the several reasons which we are not going to discuss here but as we know that this is a specific base pairing and you can use a particular DNA stretch to isolate a, a clone which is containing the complementary DNA into the bacterial cell or the clone which means for example if you have this as a, a DNA which you are looking for then for screening this molecule or for screening this particular gene containing the clone what you have to do is you have to synthesize a small stretch of DNA containing the complementary sequence of this and that actually will let you to screen so this is actually is called as the probe the molecule which you are going to use to screen the gene and this is the gene, gene sequence and you can use this particular probe with this particular sequence to screen this gene within the clone. Let us see how you can do this in a more more elaborated way. So the screening of DNA hybridization is a multi step process where first you have to do is you have to take the genomic library. So genomic library could be or the cDNA library. So uh, either of whether uh, you have you will take genomic library or the cDNA library it is going to have the different colonies onto the plate and this original plate which contains the genomic or the cDNA library is labeled as the master plate or the original plate. Then what you have to do is take this master plate and prepare a uh, transfer the cells from so what you have to do is you have to take the membrane and then transfer the some of these cells from the master plate to uh, another plate and this plate is called as the replica plate which means it is actually going to be a replica of the arrangement of colonies onto the membrane. Then you, you uh, once you got the uh, uh, clones onto the membrane then you will lyse the DNA and you will lyse the bacteria, you will denature the DNA and then you will allow them, you will allow this DNA to bind to the membrane and there are many steps which you have to do and then what you do is you will prepare the probe and you will allow them to incubate with the uh, DNA which is present inside these cells and then you will do the hybridization. After the hybridization the probe will go and bind to a specific clone once you got this specific clone onto the replica plate then what you will do is you will go to the master plate and extract the cells which you are con which are containing this particular clone and then you will take this clone and grow and reconfirm that this contains the gene of your interest simply either by sequencing or you can do further downstream uh, screening as well with the another kind of analytical or analytical tools. So for is, this screening of DNA hybridization is a multi step process you what you have to do is first you have to prepare a suitable radioactive probe which is actually this one. So you have to first prepare a radioactive prepare then you have to prepare the replica plate which is actually already we have discussed that from the master plate you will prepare a replica plate then you will transfer the colonies onto the nitrocellulose membrane once the colonies are being transferred onto the nitrocellulose membrane then you will uh, do the procedure and let the DNA is coming out from the cell and then you will put the radioactive probe uh, and do the hybridization and once the hybridization is over then you will do the washing and you will develop the membrane with the autoradiography and with that you will going to know that where the uh, your clone of interest is present and then you can extract the uh, original clone from the master plate and you can use that for extracting the 
plasmid and then downstream you can uh, you can use another type of uh, or additional analytical tools to know the presence of particular gene inside that particular clone. So, let us see uh, what are the different steps and we will discuss these steps in more detail. So, the first thing what we are going to discuss how to prepare the radioactive probe for screening the uh, clones by the DNA hybridization. So, there are two methods of preparing the radioactive probe. The first method is called as the random primer method. So, random primer method is a method in this a random primer is used to anneal to the template and then a PCR reaction is performed in the presence of radio labeled nucleotide. So, normally what we happen is when we do the PCR you are normally using the non radioactive nucleotides whereas, in this case what you are going to do is the, 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 the gene which you want to use or the stretch of DNA which you want to use as a probe what you will do is you will put a random primer and you will do a PCR along in the presence of radio labeled nucleotide. After the PCR is over you are going to have the newly synthesized DNA strand, but in this strand the nucleotide which are going to be incorporated are not going to be normal uh, uh, nucleotides, they are going to be the radioactive nucleotide and that is how the probe what you are going to develop is going to have the radioactive uh, radioactivity into that. So, what you have to do is first you will use first you will take the source DNA from which you would like to make the probe. Then what you do is you do the denaturation which means you are going to separate the strand 1 and strand 2 and then you allow your uh, random primer to be added. The random primer is going to be attached to the multiple places and then you will add the clino fragment and you will add the uh, for, uh, all the nucleotides and uh, you can add the radioactive nucleotide into the mixture. What will happen is that clino fragment will take this particular primer and it will synthesize the uh, stretch and because of that it will incorporate the radio labeled uh, nucleotides instead of normal nucleotide and ultimately you can denature the, uh, denature the uh, synthesized material. And once you, uh, when you, once you denature, this molecule will come off from the from the template, and this will going to be your radio labeled probe, which you can purify from the reaction mixture, and that can be used to screen the uh, genomic or the cDNA library using the DNA hybridization approach. Uh, so, this is what is uh, written uh, is given in the in the templates. The source double standard DNA is denatured to generate the single standard DNA as a template. So, in the first step you will denature so that all the hydrogen bonding between the two uh, strands are going to be broken down that is going to give you the templates and then the random primer is going to be attached and it will anneal to the uh, to the uh, strands and then you will add the clinov as well as the nucleotide to synthesize the, uh, the DNA and in that process the clinov fragment is going to be attached uh, the radioactive nucleotide instead of the normal nucleotide and that is how you are going to produce the radio labeled nucleotides. The other method is called as the terminal transferase method. So, the terminal transferase method is uh, using a uh, enzyme which is called as the terminal transferase or uh, and that will label the probe at the end of the last nucleotide of the probe which means if you have the uh, probe DNA ready what you can do is you can add the uh, lambda exonuclease and that actually is going to create the nix into this and then you what you do is you add the terminal transferase along with the radioactive ATP. Once you do the terminal transferase and add the radioactive ATP, what will happen is it is going to attach the radio labeled ATP or 
on the both strands of the probe and that is how the radio labeled probe is going to be ready by the this method. Irrespective of whether you prepare the probe by the uh, random primer method or the terminal transfer is method, uh, the, these probes can be used for downstream uh, uh, screening purposes. Uh, apart from these uh, two methods which we have discussed, there are many other methods which also can be used to prepare or screen the, uh, the uh, to prepare the, uh, the uh, radio labeled probes. Uh, now, once a probe is ready, you can use the probe to screen. For that, what you have to do is you have to prepare the uh, replica plate as uh, the original genomic or serial library is, uh, is very precious because it can be used on multiple occasions. Uh, what you have to do is you have to pre keep your master plate conserved and because you do not want to destroy and uh, destroy the genomic or the cDNA library. If you remember in our previous lecture as well what we have discussed, we have discussed that the uh, preparation of genomic library or the cDNA library is a very, very tedious and uh, lengthy procedure. That is why once you prepare a genomic library of a particular host, uh, you do not want to destroy the genomic library. Whereas, in the uh, screening of DNA, screening of genomic library or the cDNA library by DNA habitation method is going to be destroy the uh, uh, library. So, that is why you have to prepare the replica plate. So, that once you do the procedure on the replica plate, you will destroy whatever is being transferred onto the replica plate, but at least you are going to have your original plate and from that you will not only only extract the clone what you are looking for, but also you can use that uh, library on several occasions. So, that is why it is important that you prepare a replica plate and uh, what, what you do is in the if you want to prepare a replica plate is that you take your uh, master plate and suppose it has the colonies like this. What you have to do is you take a, 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 a nitrocellulose membrane filter and then what you do is you put the filter on top of this uh, your library and then you take out this and by doing so the, uh, the some of the uh, some of the bacterial colonies are going to stick to your replica plate to make the uh, uh, identification easy because uh, you at the end you have to superimpose your replica plate to the your master plate to know which clone you are looking for. You are also supposed to put the reference point. For example, in this case I can make three reference points and in such a way so that it would not be the uh, having any kind of symmetry and in the absence of those kind of thing what will happen is you can match these, uh, these spots and that will allow you to identify or superimpose your replica plate to the master plate. Once your replica plate is ready, then what you have to do is uh, you have to lyse the cells which are being transferred onto the membrane and the you have to release the denatured DNA. You have to de remove the proteins and then the DNA is allowed to bind to the membrane. So, the nitrocellulose membrane what you use is having a very high affinity for the DNA molecules and because of that once the bacteria releases the uh, DNA from their cell, it actually gets uh, stored there itself or it get um, blotted onto the membrane itself and in this process you denature the protein so that the protein part is going to be get away. Then what you do is you will prepare, you will, you will incubate this probe or this membrane with the radio labeled probe which we have prepared either by the random primer method or the terminal transferase method and then you let it be it probe to bind the target DNA uh, due to the base pairing and then you will remove the, uh, you will wash the membrane to remove the unbound probe and you will also wash with it with the high stringent buffers so that you will you will reduce the non specific interactions and then at the end 
what you will do is you will develop the probe with the autoradiography. So, autoradiography is means you will use the X-ray films and put the X-ray film on top of the uh, on, to, on top of the membrane and what will happen is the membranes are having the radioactivity. So, that will actually uh, they will they will produce the beta particles and these beta particles are going to uh, 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 interact with the uh, the film and once they will interact with the film they are going to uh, give you the signal and that signal can be used to tell that this is the location of the clone and then what you can do is you can take that location and put it into the master plate to extract the clone of your interest which contains the gene. So, that is what is written the position of the signal on the membrane can be matched with the master plate to get the location of the corresponding colony. Now, let us move on to the next method and the next method is called as the screening of immunological methods and this is actually based on the prop based on the fact that the every protein what we use is having the uh, stretch of amino acids uh, which are actually immunogenic which means these stretch of amino acids are going to produce the antibodies and this stretch of an amino acid which is present on the protein is called as the epitope. Normally, you have an epitope of 7 to 9 amino acids and that actually is giving you the antibodies and the antibodies which they give is specific for the particular protein. So, that antibody is can be used as an analytical tool in this case. The, there are similar several similarities between the screening of the uh, uh, genomic library or the cDNA library by the immunological method or to the, uh, the uh, DNA hybridization method. So, the first step is the same that you are going to start with the master plate, you will prepare your replica plate. So, you will prepare the replica plate. So, and once the replica plate is over, then what you will do is you will you will you will lyse the cells and allow the protein to bind to the membrane. So, the, the nitrocellulose membrane what you will use is uh, having very high affinity for the protein. So, you can imagine that the cell gar got lysed and all the protein are now been bind to the protein within that vicinity and now you have the bound protein. Now, this bound protein is you, you are going to incubate with the primary antibody. So, the antibody what you are going to develop against your gene of interest or the protein of interest is called as the primary antibody. So, what will happen is the primary antibody will go and bind to the proteins uh, which are been coming out from a particular clone or the set of clones and then what you do is you will add the secondary antibodies. So, the secondary antibodies does not have any affinity for your protein instead the secondary antibodies are having the affinity for the primary antibodies which means the secondary antibodies are going to bind your primary antibodies and why it is called as secondary antibodies because you are adding it to the second time whereas the secondary antibodies are also been coupled to a particular type of enzyme and this enzyme can be used uh, to catalyze the reaction because at the end you have to develop. So, once you add the secondary antibodies then you will wash the membrane to remove the secondary as well as the primary. This washing is going to be very harsh so that uh, you will you will remove the non-specific binding and then what will happen is depending on this enzyme you can use this specific substrate to develop the uh, develop the uh, membrane and the enzyme which are very very popular are the HRP horse reduced peroxidase or the alkaline phosphatase. 
So, based on whether you are using the Hosch Redis peroxidase or the alkaline phosphatase, you can use their corresponding substrates and then they, these substrates are actually being processed by the enzyme which is being uh, present onto the secondary antibodies and then they will be precipitates these substrate onto the site of the, these, these, these clones. Now, once you know that okay, this is my site of, this is my specific clones, you can actually go back to the master plate and extract this particular clone and use it for downstream applications. You can take out this clone, you can sequence the clone to know that it, whether it contains that particular enzyme or particular uh, gene or not and you can do a protein production also and to know whether this is producing that particular protein or not. Now the question comes why we are using the primary antibodies and why we, we why it is not just like that we, we use the primary antibodies labeled with the enzyme. So the, the, so the reason why we use the two antibodies instead of one antibody is that once you use the primary and the secondary antibodies you actually amplify the initial sickness. So, the amount of protein what is present inside these clone is very, very low. They may be in the nanogram range and that is why the, you are actually developing a primary antibody which is very, very specific. So, with that actually it goes and binds, but with that small amount of antibody which are actually binding to your antigen inside the uh, colony it is not going to give you any signal if you develop that with the enzyme which is bound to the primary antibody. Because of that what you do is you go and use the secondary antibody. So, secondary antibody is specific only for the antibodies which you are used. So, that is why the secondary antibody will go and bind to the primary antibody and as per a rough estimate it is found that the every primary antibody is being bound by the three secondary antibodies. Uh, so, because of that if you if you calculate the signal get amplified several folds because the enzyme is attached to all those three secondary antibodies and uh, it will give you a very, very large signal compared to the only by using the primary antibodies. Now, once you got these clones you, what you have to do is you got the clone either by the immunological method or the DNA hybridization method, you have to use these clones and you have to do a downstream ap uh, applications. You can do a, a further analytical tools to uh, know whether the gene what we are looking for is right or not. So, that is why whether you use the DNA hybridization method or the immunological method, you have to repeat this procedure on multiple occasions so that you will be sure and confident that the clone what you are purifying is actually the specific clones and the reliable clone. Now let us move on to the third method and the third method is called as the enzymatic method and this method is simply based on the ability of the protein to exhibit a enzymatic activity. Uh, the one of the major drawback of this approach is that it is not very, very specific. Uh, for example, if you are looking for a kinase and uh, suppose you are looking for a kinase called PKC which is called protein kinase C, but if you do an activity for kinase, uh, the, you will also going to, uh, the other enzymes are also going to catalyze the reactions which are falling into the kinase category. For example, if you do a reaction for PKC, uh, the P30, MAPK and all other kind of classes of enzymes or kinases are going to also catalyze this reaction. That is why in with this approach the background is going to be very, very high and you may have the large number of false positives. Uh, we have so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the hybridization techniques where uh, we have discussed about the immunological techniques and we have also discussed about the enzymatic method to screen the genomic or the cDNA library so that you can be able to uh, get the clones which contains your specific gene. But once you got these clones, uh, you have to get your gene and then you also have to do the uh, some more confirmatory test uh, before you can use them 
for downstream applications. So, at the end of these screening of these uh, uh, screening of these uh, genomic library or the cDNA library, what you are going to get? You are going to get a set of clones which are containing your fragments. So, it is always important to remember that you are not going to get the single clone, you are going to get multiple clones and as I said in the past also when you were when we were discussing about the genomic library that if you do a screening of genomic library, the success of having a preparation of success of getting a uh, right clone depends on the number of clones what you have prepared in the genomic library or the number of clones which are uh, representing your genomic uh, content as well as how the that particular content is being distributed. So, that actually will decide whether you will be able to uh, screen a specific gene or not. So, let me give you an example. For example, you have done the screening and the these are the 3 or 4 clones which are got highlighted and you did it multiple times and every time what you do when you do you are getting these 4 clones are being highlighted and they are giving you the positives or they are giving you the positive signal which means all these 4 are containing your gene. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to go to the master plate and extract this particular clone and extract the plasmids. Now, you take out the plasmid and do a sequencing. Now, once you do the sequencing, you will know whether this plasmid contain what genomic sequence this plasmid contains. So, it could be a possibility that suppose this is the clone 1, this is the clone uh, 2, this is 3 and this is 4. Now, for clone number 1, you may have a gene 1 which is half and you may have a another gene which is gene 2. Okay. So, you have a small fragment of A and a small fragment of the 2. So, which means you uh, this gene got broken down from here and then you ha also have a uh, some more DNA from the gene number 2. Now, for the clone number 2 what will happen is that you have this you have the full A and you have the small portion of 2. Okay. Now, for the clone number 3, you may have this small A, small 2 and the for clone number 4, you may have both of this 1 and 2. Okay. So, in these cases what will happen is it is very very difficult to decide whether the gene of your interest is 1 or whether the gene of interest is 2 and that is why I was when we were discussing about the preparation of genomic library it is very important that you may have a specific clone which will be like this either 1 or either 2. So, that when these clones are going to highlight you will say this is my gene of interest or this is my gene of interest. So, if that is not the case and you have the overlapping genes and you have multiple genes within the same clone, it is difficult to say whether the uh, your gene of interest is uh, gene number 1 or the gene number 2. But even then once you do the sequencing the uh, of these clones, uh, the probably you will be able to um, distinguish which is the gene which is corresponding to your protein because uh, in some of the cases you may have the full gene and the other one is the partial gene and that clone might be giving you higher signal and uh, because the, the, all these clones may not be giving you the similar kind of sequence signal some some pro, some clone may be giving the more signal some may be giving the less signal so because of that if you do the sequencing of these clones then you will know that which clone is containing the full gene full length gene of my gene of interest and that could be one of your 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 gene fragment which you are looking for so with this uh, we would like to conclude our lecture here so with this 
we would like to conclude our lecture here and in this lecture what we have discussed, we have discussed about how to screen the genomic library or the cDNA library and uh, we have also discussed in detail how to, uh, what are the different approaches can be used to screen the genomic or the cDNA library and uh, we, have all, we have discussed about the DNA hybridization method, immunological method as well as the enzymatic method and uh, in totality with the combination of all the three, you will be able to screen the gene of your interest uh, for the downstream applications. And in the subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the diff, uh, alternate approach where the, uh, the, the genomic sequences are known, which means we are going to discuss about the uh, polymerase chain reactions and how you can use the polymerase chain reaction to get the gene of your interest or the fragment of your interest and how you can use, how you can clone that into the vector of your interest. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here, thank you.